Mizumi Makoto is an ordinary high school student who was transported to another world on the day he was kidnapped. He lived a day like any other, following his usual routine, until he fell asleep in his bed and woke up in a strange and unfamiliar place. The voice of a self-proclaimed god spoke to him, announcing that he was going to another world. Makoto was asked to sign to indicate his consent to the arrangement, because consent is important, my friends. Soon, the owner of the voice revealed his true form and introduced himself as the sovereign of the kingdom of the night. This is when Yumi told him that he would make Makoto a hero and deliver him to the goddess of another world. Makoto recognized her as a succubus from Japanese mythology, which explained that Makoto's parents came from another world and had made an agreement with the goddess to be transferred. They agreed to give her one day, which was the most important thing to them. If Makoto didn't go, one of his sisters would be taken in his place. Makoto was quickly sent to the goddess who immediately ridiculed him, hurling a series of insults and stating that his existence disgusted her. Her rudeness and hostility left him incredulous, considering that it was thanks to her that he was there in the first place. She added that she had already found other heroes and that he could stay on the periphery of her world. Despite her arrogance and impoliteness, the goddess offered Makoto a small gift the ability to understand languages other than human language. That's how he was sent to another world. He fell from a great height, but a cushion appeared and saved him. The cushion turned out to be a two-headed dog, which told him that he might not be a hero, but that it meant he was free to do as he pleased. She also explained that in his previous world, his magic had been suppressed, but now it would come into full play. The place where he landed was barren and devoid of life, no trees, plants, animals or people in sight. For three days, he explored and encountered no one. One night, while he was walking, he heard someone calling for help. He concentrated and pinpointed the source of the voice, rushing to the scene. There, he saw a two-headed dog about to attack a creature that resembled a pig. He saved the pig by easily defeating the monster. This confirmed what Yumi had said. Makoto had powers here. He talked to the woman who was surprised that an outsider like Makoto could understand and speak to her. She introduced herself as an orc from the highlands named Emma. He asked if there were any people nearby and she replied that there was no human village in the wasteland at the end of the world. He asked if her village was close and she explained that she was heading to the Divine Mountain to offer herself as a sacrifice to shine. She explained that in recent years, her village had been covered in fog and the crops had stopped producing. Offering sacrifices had helped to alleviate the fog. Makoto expressed his desire to save Emma from this unfortunate situation and Emma told him there was a place where he could purify himself to repay her for helping with the network and get rid of the exhaustion from his travels. They arrived at the location and Makoto finally had his first meal in three days. Emma used magic to obtain some portions of food, and he was surprised to see the bowls floating. She explained that it was everyday transport magic. He admitted that he didn't know how to use magic and asked her to teach him. They started with a basic fire spell, which Makoto easily succeeded in casting, even producing more magic than Emma herself. Shocked, she measured his magic level. The other creatures present were now curious about Makoto's magic level and gathered around him. It turned out that Makoto was only at level 1 and everyone quickly lost interest in the matter. The next morning, Makoto set off to confront Shine alone. Shine was a giant and intimidating dragon. He used the magic he had learned to injure Shine and decided to fight him with his fists. Shine collapsed, but before Makoto could do more, his enemy trapped him in an illusion. He experienced a memory of unrequited love from his school days, but this time he decided to confess his feelings, and both of them felt joy. However, Makoto broke free. He created a space where he could manipulate the surrounding area. As he prepared to attack, it turned out that the dragon no longer wanted to fight after seeing his memories. 
Shine offered to make a contract with him, in other words, to become his companion. Initially shocked, Makoto accepted. Once the contract was made, the dragon transformed into a beautiful woman dressed in traditional Japanese clothing. The human form of Shine didn't suit Makoto's expectations, as he thought having a dragon as a mount would be more useful. She explained that in contracts like theirs, the weaker one took on the form of the stronger one, with magical power and physical abilities without limits. Makoto was clearly the stronger one. Shine opened a misty portal, explaining that beyond it was a demi-plane she controlled. It was a space where they could enter and exit through misty gates. Makoto followed her through the portal. Once inside, they were greeted by a lush landscape very different from the arid wastelands. He asked where they were, but she had no idea either. She explained that her demi-plane was supposed to be a dark and empty space, and whatever she wanted would simply be there. As they walked, they came across a persimmon tree with ripe fruits. Makoto took one for himself and another for Shine. She tasted it and was surprised by its delicious taste. They returned to the wastelands to clear up misunderstandings between the other inhabitants and Shine in her dragon form. Upon their return, Emma was already at the mountain, looking for Makoto. Eventually, they met and Emma couldn't understand why a female human was calling herself Shine when she was supposed to be the great invincible dragon. Shine explained that she had been captivated by her master and had made a contract with him. She shows him the dragon scales that had fallen off during their battle, which terrifies Emma and the fairy faints that evening. A party is organised in Emma's village. Shine drinks too much and lets loose while he remains disciplined enough not to overindulge in alcohol. Emma thanks him for saving their village, but he insists that it's not a big deal. Drunk, Shine proposes to one of the orcs to settle in his demiplane to live on fertile land. The next morning, Makoto is surprised to see that the orcs have packed their belongings. He confronts Shine, asking her what she did last night. Shine replies that she took care of everything, and prepared a fragment of herself in her child form to live with the orcs. In an instant, all the highland orcs living in the village are transported to the demi-plane, and it has been several days since the orcs moved. Makoto performs a self-assessment and learns that he has the strongest affinity for water magic, and his weakest is thunder. Shine watches historical dramas thanks to her memory, and all she has to do is glance at her memories. However, since Makoto cannot move while she looks at her memories, she ventures outside in search of materials she could use to create a television, and while going through her memories, Makoto comes across a family photo from his childhood. Remembering that his parents are originally from this world, he decides to retrace their path while Shine is absent. Makoto decides to help the orc villagers with their tasks and is accompanied by an elderly dwarf. The dwarf is unconscious and injured, so Makoto asks why she is with a dwarf. Suddenly, a giant black spider, which turns out to be the timely pouch Makoto is looking for, appears and attacks Makoto. They fight, but the spider has intense regenerative powers, and every time it loses a leg or two, they quickly grow back. Eventually, Makoto manages to trap the spider against a tree, stabbing it with his tightly clenched paws. He finally cracks and uses his powers to their fullest potential, defeating the spider before fainting. Shine witnesses the entire battle, impressed by her master's abilities. The spider, after being captivated by Makoto's powers, suddenly becomes affectionate towards him, stating that Makoto's powers are so good and delicious. She decides to stay with Makoto forever, and Shine talks to her, convincing her to make a contract with Makoto. Later in the day, Makoto wakes up completely healed, and an unknown woman is beside his bed. She thanks him for the meal and tells him that she is at his service. While Makoto was unconscious, Shine and Emma used magic to heal his wounds, as the unknown woman explains. He asks who she is, and she tells him that she is the Black Spider, and that she took on this human form after making a contract with him. Makoto points out that he thought contracts required the consent of both parties. 
Now that he's awake, the dwarf that Shine saved earlier asks to speak with him. She tells him that she is no ordinary dwarf, but comes from an ancient sect that forged extravagant and powerful artifacts. She calls herself Beren, the Ancient Nose. Beren explains that because Makoto repelled the black spider, his village was saved from a catastrophe, and the curse of the black spider has been lifted, returning her to her original form. Beren asks Makoto to allow them to settle in Shine's demiplane. Makoto quickly agrees. Shine sets some conditions for the new inhabitants. They must participate in city development, provide weapons, and pay taxes in the future. She also adds that they must acknowledge Makoto as their lord. Beren accepts these conditions. Later in the day, Makoto spends some time in the wasteland searching for signs of his parents' journey. Shine emerges from her demiplane and approaches him, saying she has a very important request to make. When he returns to the demiplane, she reveals that her request is to name the two of them. Makoto carefully considers the names for his servants. He names Shine Tomo after the bravest female samurai he knows. Tomo radiates with joy upon receiving this name, claiming that it has increased her strength. He then names the black spider Mayo by combining characters from his homeland for Zero and her favorite element, water. It's time for the demi-plane inhabitants to choose how to address Makoto. Tomo and Mio ask everyone to gather, including species they have never seen before. The citizens come to an agreement and decide to call him Young Master. He reluctantly accepts. The village leader of the Nazainas eventually approaches Makoto and asks if he has been given a mission by the goddess who presides over their world. Just the thought of her angers Makoto, and he exclaims that he would never accept a mission from her, as she has been terrible to him. Tomo then introduces her disciples, the mist lizards, a powerful species with attributes of both water and air. She has several of them, which Makoto was unaware of until now. Mio also has her own disciples, the algae, who were unable to escape their fate, but, after receiving Makoto's essence, regained their senses. They panic and ask him what she means by essence, and she explains that she is referring to his blood and manner. After this brief interaction with the demi-plane inhabitants, Makoto explores the wasteland in search of a human settlement. He eventually finds one and even encounters a human girl, but she is terrified of him and flees. What's worse, he doesn't even understand their language. It turns out that the goddess has granted him the ability to speak any language other than the one used by the Hymenians. He attempts to follow the young girl into the human city, but is met with hostility from the residents. If you want a continuation of this anime, subscribe, leave a like, and a comment to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching this video.